Hi folks, Bobcat here. I decided to record a little something unscripted. I would have Burke on, but he is unavailable at the moment, and I kind of wanted to strike while this was still a somewhat relevant topic. Uh, as a lot of you who follow our Twitter or have noticed that we suddenly have a Daily Motion page know, uh, the Five Point Podcast is no longer going to be hosted on Blip. We got a message on Friday along with a lot of people saying that our channel, for no adequately given reason, was going to be locked in July and finally deleted sometime in, I believe, late August. A lot of people have already commented on this, um, used some colorful language. I'm going to choose to keep a little bit classier, because in my case, I can understand why the Five Point Podcast is not necessarily where Blip wants to go with their channel. I mean, we haven't had a new episode in approximately a year, actually a little bit more than a year now. I mean, we, Burke and I both got busy. We are planning to come back, and this is sort of a funny way to have a comeback video announced, but life is funny. So yeah, I mean, Blip has, seems to have decided that... Well, actually, first a little bit of backstory. Uh, there was this big studio called Maker Studios who owns a big collective of YouTube channels, and Disney recently bought them out. And what's, for Disney, a very smart little move? Now, some people are blaming Disney for the massive wave of deletions, but I'm inclined to think that this is doing an already existing policy, considering, I, and I just noticed in the last few months, a number of blip channels that I would find links to were no longer active. They're really paring down what they have. I guess they're going for quality. Again, I can understand it. We're not really a video channel. We're... A, we are, well, a podcast channel. We have a still image on our videos. We used Blip for uploading to iTunes, and that's pretty much it. You know, my one regret is that we never got our ad revenue. We had about $18 out of the $25 payout, but there's no way that's going to happen between now and then, especially since I <laughs> went through and disabled all the ads I could because I'm spiteful like that. I mean, here's the thing about the Five Point Podcast. I always view the Five Point Podcast as a fun little hobby that, if it makes me money, great. I'd never say no to money, because who would say no to money? It's never been a job. It's often taken about as much work as a job might, but it's never been a job. It's just been, it's been a fun little experiment. I love just getting on the radio and talking nonsense with Burke, because Burke is fun to talk nonsense with. I'm grateful for the friends like Paranormal Rob and Yorocha and, um, and Mad Shadow and everyone else who's ever been on the podcast or who has ever given us suggestions or things like that. It's just been, you know, it's been fun to just do something that's kind of low stress. I mean, there's not a lot of research involved. You know, this is not SF Debris where, to paraphrase something he said once, it's like he's doing his doctoral thesis in nerd studies. So I'm not necessarily offended on our behalf. Again, I understand. Frankly, if I was running a website with the goal of quality videos, I wouldn't necessarily want the Five Point Podcast on there. Because we are a quality something, but a quality video is not it. But the recent purge has taken out a lot of people who, frankly, I, I don't know what else they could do. I'm not sure if Blip thought they had too many of the same kind of show, because there were a lot of people who were kind of aping the Nostalgia Critic style on there. Not that I necessarily that's a bad thing. I mean, we're ripping, we ripped off Why Ruler of Time's weekly uh, manga podcast in some of its aspects. But at the same time, Yesu Otaku? Paranormal Rob? These were people who make great videos. I mean, Yesu Otaku is, to my mind, if I were to ever stop being worried about um, the legal ramifications of ripping DVDs for this type of thing, Yesu Otaku is who I'd want to be like. I would love to have her quality of research and thoughtfulness. And Paranormal Rob? Paranormal Rob is one of those people online who I consider to be one of my friends. Not necessarily take a bullet friends, but then again, there aren't very many people online who I would call take a bullet friends. 
but he's a good guy. I want good things to happen to him. I'm pulling for him, as evidenced by my almost embarrassing number of donations over the years. And it really just kind of makes me sad inside that that happened to him, too. But especially Yesu Otaku. I mean, I don't know what they're thinking. Okay, here's here's my thesis on Blip. Blip got its start. But when I say got its start, I mean, its existence since 2009. But where it really started to pick up was when YouTube um, went after people who were uploading uh, copywritten content. Blip's niche has been if you wanted to make a review show using a lot of footage from movies or cartoons or anime or whatever, you could go there and you were safe. And that's the community they've built up. Though I'm, I'll talk a little bit about the community there in a minute. So that's... They, I feel like they're kind of biting the hand that made them. Because, frankly, without Nostalgia Critic, how many of you would go to Blip? How many of you would have ever heard of Blip? Messing with someone in his stable is short-sighted. It's not like he's going to leave Blip, but you know he's a CEO of a small of a small company too. Frankly, if I were him, I would be pursuing as many alternatives as I could just to make sure that you know what happens if they decide that they that they're done with the whole wacky reviewer phase, because that's what they've really shown. They're kind of arbitrary. <clears throat> Which is exactly why I decided to start disliking Google's, because when they disallowed our ad content, they didn't give a reason. Suspicious activity. Was it suspicious activity that we accidentally clicked an ad? Was it suspicious activity that we had too much uh, clicks per traffic? <clears throat> Frankly, when you're making decisions that affect people's livelihoods, because let's be honest, there are a lot of people out there whose life goal is to be supported by blip revenue, or at least there were. People deserve, an, people deserve a reason. I mean, who's next? SF Debris? Are they just going to decide that since he never appears in front of the camera that he isn't really making a show? I mean, who's next? Spoony, because he can be kind of offensive sometimes? Again, this is a hobby that I would like to occasionally pay for itself, but... This is really going to hurt some people, which is why we've moved to Daily Motion. You might be watching this on Daily Motion. You might be watching this on Blip. You won't be watching it on Blip for much longer, but <laughs> uh, I do feel like I can kind of see what Blip is going for. Blip, it seems like, has decided that they're sick of being YouTube's underbelly. They've made a few decisions. They've been paring down the number of shows. They stopped letting themselves be a server for going straight to iTunes. And by the way, thank you guys for giving us no access to our iTunes channel so we can't even access it anymore because we never had a separate iTunes channel from Blip. We're going to have to figure out how to set one of those up pretty quickly. But I can see where Blip is trying to go. I think they're trying to position themselves as a sort for a source for premium video. If you look at a Blip video when they're done with this, You'll see something with some pretty good production values. You'll uh, not have to worry about seeing a bazillion Minecraft Let's Plays. You won't have to worry about someone just sitting in front of their webcam ranting at the camera. Um, you know, you'll just have stuff that's really like an episode. The problem there is that you can find that pretty much anywhere online. You're cutting out the wheat from the chaff, but you're also cutting out a lot of wheat at the same time. Because the way a video channel is set up, a video channel is not quite like a TV station. I feel like Blip has always tried to run it like a TV station. Um, the internet is made of social networks, which Blip has never had. Say what you will about YouTube channel comments before Google ruined them with their Google Plus integration, you know, that was the homophobia, the the bigotry going all directions, um, just terribleness. Um, there was a community there. It wasn't necessarily the best community, but you know, if you had a good channel, you could, um, and you could just ignore the idiots. You could have a good community. It's harder nowadays, but it's still possible if you're willing to invest the time in it. Blip has always been kind of parasitic. 
um, in the sense of they've never had their own comment system. It's always been based on Facebook or uh, other pl other plugins. I've, I've just never had the sense that Blip is any sort of community. And that's sort of been where YouTube's strength has been that Blip's strength hasn't. YouTube, at its best, is a social community. You know that pretty much anyone who's going to make a video is going to be out there on YouTube. Or if they aren't, there's a reason that they aren't, like they've been banned. But, yeah, the expectation is you, if you want a video, you go to YouTube. Blip isn't that. Blip runs themselves more like a TV station. They have a select set of programs that you can watch there. The trouble being that I can't th think of a lot there that I care to watch that I can't find on YouTube. Even that guy with the glasses, who was famously banned from them, seems to now have enough clout that he's allowed to exist there. As part of the uh, League of Super Reviewers, or whatever they call it on there. Which, funny thing, for the longest time I thought that was some jerk who was just uploading their videos on there without their permission. So I'm, I was really glad when I found out that it was them. But Blip isn't a community. Blip also isn't a place where you can find anything you want to find. Actually, if you were a small fry like us, Blip has not shown us in their search results for years now. And believe me, I've gone looking. Blip also, frankly, stinks as a service because, in the modern age at least, because they're Flash-based, so a lot of mobile devices, that I, at least the ones I've owned, have never been able to play Blip properly, or they play it sporadically um, if they don't have Flash enabled, which you know, a lot of machines don't if they're a f smartphone, because Flash... That was an early decision made with the iPhone that Flash drains um, the battery life way too fast. But I'm just not sure where from this point Blip's growth comes from. It isn't in mobile because their videos, if you embed them on your website, aren't viewable in mobile. It isn't in community because there isn't a scrappy bunch of Blip people who think of themselves as a community. Uh, the community was always that guy with the glasses or the late great Desu Des Brigade. Blip was just kind of the ugly middleman that they used towards reaching people who um, were willing to look at videos elsewhere than YouTube because they were good. And that really is it, is that what it comes down to is community, users. And I feel like Blip has done a lot here to just sort of shoot themselves in the foot. Because, you know, Paranormal Rob in a recent video put it well. They're untrustworthy. If I have a channel on Blip, you know, if I, if I th hypothetically had a channel on Blip that hadn't been banned, then I'm not going to trust them to keep it. I'm going to go hedging my bets. And you know what hedging your bets means? Hedging your bets means that you're encouraging people to post it elsewhere. Because, you know what? Blip was our primary place to post it. It was the most convenient. We got ad revenue. Well, in theory, we got ad revenue. We never got a single payout. <laughs> Joke's on us. And it's just... I think I'm kind of starting to ramble a little bit, but really I just don't see Blip having a whole lot of future. It reminds me of what happened to MySpace. MySpace got really obnoxious. There were too many ads. And there was a better alternative, i.e. Facebook. In our case, you know, Blip is a channel that... You, or as a network that you don't, you're don't, not sure if you if you have any security there. They don't really communicate with you. You know, you know, I would have felt much better if it was a customized thing, saying, hey, you know what, we don't do podcasts anymore. Um, you're gone. The only honorable thing they did was give us the chance to move our stuff elsewhere first. But again, at the end of the day, they aren't required to give me a place to host. Just like I'm not necessarily required to ever view them without an ad blocker on again. Sorry, Linkara. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I hope for everyone who's still on Blip that they have the best happen, but I would honestly suggest go elsewhere. I mean, Daily Motion? Daily Motion understands its place in the world. They understand themselves as being sort of the Shasta to, uh, to YouTube's Coke. They've made it very easy to get on there. They they are just very accommodating. And after after four days, we've already... Well, actually, I won't necessarily talk about how much we've earned, but we've definitely are well on our way to, at their current rate to the $100 uh, payout barrier, which is why I'm glad I picked out Dailymotion, because they seem to be good people. 
they could do a bit better job pursuing or uh, keeping an eye out for porn on their website. But, you know, you just put up your parental blocks and you're good. And I think that's about all I need to say, because I think I'm starting to ramble a little bit. I actually didn't think this was going to go longer than 10 minutes, but I just had I just had to play a little bit of backseat CEO. I mean, really, do, I really don't think we're going to see Blip run in the same form in a few years, because, of course, I mean, what's Blip doing that YouTube isn't? What's Blip doing that Daily Motion isn't? You're in a commoditized business, and you're chasing away um, your user base. And also, I, I want to just take this chance to formally announce in video form that, yes, the Five Point Podcast is returning. Uh, you'll have start seeing some episodes come up this summer. We don't have an official date yet. But we have some interesting stuff out there. In fact, you'll probably see a little video from Burke and I about what you can expect. And in fact, everything's new. We have a new website, www.fivepointpodcast.com, hosted via WordPress, and a new email address, fivepointpodcast at outlook.com. So yeah, if you want to contact us, that's the way to do it. Good night and good luck.